it's Laura. Today I wanted to come on here and kind of just give you an eight and a half years living with an ileostomy update. So first and foremost, if you can't tell, I have had quite a YouTube writer's block. So I would absolutely love it if below this video you could give me like if you have any desires for hearing me talk about anything, uh, ostomy related, life related, whatever, uh, please post it below. I just have been living with an ostomy so long now that I think I've kind of lost touch of what is going to be helpful and what might not be helpful to talk about on here, but I very much want to start this up and talk to you guys and provide as much support as I can but I think I'm just having a little bit of a hard time even deciding what will and will not be helpful to you. So anyways, today I wanted to just give you kind of a health update, eight and a half years after a total cleft me. I, the most uh, asked question that I get is what happened with your J pouch? Did you get reconnected? Did you not get reconnected? Like what happened? So I'll answer that. And then I guess just kind of a general life update and if I'll do that last, so if you're not interested in a life update, you can just click away only if you're here for just the ostomy stuff. So first, my general health update. So I had my total colectomy, diverting ileostomy and J pouch formation surgery all in one in December of 2011. So you guys can totally watch like all of the past videos that I've ever done if you're interested in that but I really want to just talk about now here and now so the first thing that I want to talk about is the fact that it has taken me this long and I can't even believe this and I like want to kick myself thinking about it but to ask my general practitioner for a referral to a dietitian and I think it just took me recognizing that I know how to feed myself. Diet is really hard for me. If you've watched my videos for a while, you know that I have a ton of scar tissue that uh, happened after surgery, and it's really hard for me to eat a lot of different things. And some people can eat whatever the heck they want, and some people are more restricted like I am. But anyways, I know how to take care of myself. I obviously can keep myself alive, here I am but I don't know how to like really nourish my body with the limitations that I have other than like juices, which admittedly I am a little bit lazy at because a juicer is such a pain to clean. So I have not scheduled it yet, but I am very excited. I am just so ready to stop like the surviving mentality of I know how to take care of myself and I keep myself alive to like, what can I eat in order to get rid of the fatigue that I felt for the last 10 years, excuse me, since diagnosis with ulcerative colitis or even a little bit before then? What can I eat to make myself feel good, like energized and full and happy and I'm getting the right nutrients? I just want to start eating not just to keep myself alive, but to nourish myself and to give my body really great things. Uh, so that is one thing that I'm doing and I'm really excited and if you guys are interested in that once I have the appointment I would be more than happy to talk about what that was like what the dietitian said obviously it's gonna be just like towards me and my personal health and issues with digestion uh, but I, I think that just talking about the process of going to a dietitian not to figure out how to lose weight and not to figure out like uh, you know some other things but just like with an ostomy hey help me nourish myself also i have the added challenge uh of being vegetarian that's something that i have been doing for over three years and i'm really stubborn about it and it feels really wonderful and in line with my personal beliefs so that's not a compromise to me i don't think at least at this point i'm not saying that like down the road in 10 years maybe i won't i don't know but Anyway, so that's one part of it. The other part is, if you have been following me for a long time, you know that this has been an issue for years, and that's that I still have a peritoneal and pelvic 
inclusion cyst. So basically what happened after surgery, it was either sepsis or SERS, we're not exactly sure what it was, but I uh, had a really tough go and was in the ICU and it was really scary and we didn't know how I was going to, like, they didn't know if I was going to live or not uh, for a little bit. And so there was a lot of inflammation during that time and basically the theory that my doctors have come up with is that the tissue in a certain part of my abdomen got so damaged that it can't absorb fluid anymore. So uh, ovaries and lots of other things inside of there produce a lot of fluid. So I had this really hard journey figuring out uh, how to make the times that I needed this drained fewer and further between. So when I started right after surgery, I did get it drained about once every four months and it's it's not a terribly invasive procedure, but it's invasive. They have to put you to sleep and there's prep and there's all sorts of stuff and it's painful. So uh, going vegetarian was one of the things that I truly believe helped me to now only get it drained once every one and a half to two years. Uh, and another thing was talking to a gynecologist who also is incredible and spoke with my GI doctors and my surgeon. And uh, he put me on a low estrogen dose of birth control and that's so my ovaries don't produce as much fluid, therefore it fills up more slowly. And basically it's always filling, but really slowly. And when I start to feel pain, which it just started happening again and I got it drained a year and a half ago, uh, it's probably about the size of like an orange or an apple and it gets to about the size like the biggest I've ever had they said like was the size of a grapefruit and it's just like right in my lower left abdomen and so the the reasons that I knew that something was wrong is that at first it started hurting when I got up in the morning when my bladder went from really full to empty that change really hurts. Not my bladder, not my like urethra, like nothing like that. It hurts that part of my abdomen. And so that was kind of weird. And then sex started hurting. And then walking started hurting. Like as it gets bigger, it causes more and more pain. So that was my symptom um, that I have recognized. So that is really the only post-op complication I have other than scar tissue making it difficult with like blockages and stuff but that is really the only other thing um so other than that my health is pretty good I mean other than the fatigue also that that's it I I have been really active I've fallen in love with rock climbing and do that all the time like I you guys know that I am super active and I love to travel and I love to work out and I love to like do as many things as life allows me to do. So it's been really positive and I feel really lucky to only have a couple complications. Knock on wood. <laughs> so the next thing I wanted to talk about was like, what happened to your J pouch? What have you done? Uh, and the answer is nothing. Um, this is probably like the least satisfying answer you've ever gotten. So because of the inclusion cyst originally, we thought that maybe it wouldn't be a great idea to reconnect me because I get pain when my bladder empties and uh, fills. And so J pouch will also do that and it's very everything's really close together there so I was really afraid that it would cause a lot more pain because of the inclusion cyst. That being said also uh, I'm really nervous about getting reconnected. I have heard people talk about it being really wonderful and they're so happy and it's amazing and they can do all these things and I've also heard horror stories and at this point in my life, I am so not bothered by living with an ostomy and honestly like love life and don't even really think about it that much anymore <laughs> that the thought of going through with a surgery that might make my health worse is really terrifying to me. And my total colectomy was not optional. It was mandatory. I, I needed it to uh, live. and. 
this feels optional. And I'm still trying to figure out when is the right time to have an optional surgery. And so my thought is I still want to try. I still want to try because my J pouch is in there. It's all connected. It's ready to go. Like it's just not connected. So I won't know unless I try. And if it doesn't work, I know what living with an ostomy is like. I'm very comfortable living with an ostomy. The only thing is I love my stoma. It's like so nice. It's so protruding and like a perfect little rosebud. And I would feel so sad if I like got a stoma that wasn't as easy to handle afterwards if I had to go back. But that's really the only thing I'd be sad about. So also there is this fear that I have because I've talked to certain people that it might be better if I choose to have kids and I'm able to have kids to go through pregnancy without being reconnected first. Um, there's something about having a J pouch that makes pregnancy and birth harder. Um, I don't exactly know why, so don't take my word for it. Ask your doctor specifically, but that was at one point in time told to me. So. I need to do a lot more research. That being said, this is also not the right time in my life. I don't have great insurance. I don't have a very huge paycheck. Like I um, get paid for seeing clients. So if I don't see clients, I don't get paid. So I don't necessarily think that I would get any sort of like time off for that. We don't get sick time. We don't get those types of things. So. I feel like I will have to figure out some other life stuff before I go through with it. But you know that if I do, you guys will be some of the first to know. So that's that answer. I know it's probably the least satisfying, most waited for thing in the entire world. So I apologize that it's not something way cooler. Um, but that's what it is. And the last thing I just wanted to do is update you on my life which is that i got my master's degree i have been a practicing mental health therapist for just under two years now i am uh, back in illinois and i love it i'm still consulting for shield once in a while when i can uh, do that and everything is is pretty good everything is pretty stable and um, so right now I'm just kind of figuring out what's next for me. I definitely want to come on here and talk to you guys a lot more. I miss this. I always kind of operated from the standpoint of I'm really lucky that I have some people in my personal life who are incredibly supportive. And also I have friends both online and in real life that have ostomies. And that has been such an incredible blessing and I realized that not everyone is as lucky as I am so that's kind of where this comes from is if you don't have access to someone with an ostomy if you don't have someone to ask your personal questions um, about living with an ostomy too I, I want to be that and so I just love you guys and I cannot tell you how much your comments mean to me and I hope that I continue to get some ideas and continue to do this so please if you have any questions thoughts things you want me to talk about please leave them down below and I will be happy to do that but for now I hope you guys are happy and healthy and I will talk to you soon bye